Hi again. The work with pedigrees continues, and what they've given us this time is the ABO blood types of a large-ish family. And they ask us to work through this and figure out as many genotypes as we can. In particular, they want to know if we can deduce the blood types of these two individuals with the question marks 1, 4, and 1, 6. But uh, purely out of curiosity, we'll fill in as much of this as we can manage. So, what are the easiest places to get information on this? I'll tell you one place we don't want to start. We don't want to start with people who have, say, blood type A, because there's some uncertainty about their genotype. There's two ways to have blood type A. You can be IAIA, or you can be IA little i. And you can tell which just at a glance, so that's not where we want to start our analysis. Here's a couple good blood types that we want to lock on to quickly. If your blood type is O, then guaranteed your genotype is little i, little i. And we have a number of those. Let's get those filled in right away. That's free information. Is that all the O's? I think so. What's the other blood type that only has one genotype associated with it? It's not A, and it's not B, and we took care of O already. Blood type AB is always the same genotype. To be that, you must have the A allele, and you must have the B allele, so you look like this. And there are a few places we can put that in, so I, A, I, B. Uh, I know there's a couple more. I, A. I.B. and her and that's it. Okay, so those are the ones where we completely know the genotype instantly. Now there are a few other pieces that we can fill in that are less great but st there's still something. If your blood type is A, certainly you have the A allele. Now, I don't know if you have two copies of it, or if this is a little I sitting right here, but I can at least put that in. And if your blood type is B, same argument, you must have the B allele. I don't know if you have a second copy or a little I, we'll get to that later. But for anyone whose blood type A or B, I can at least get half their genotype, and that's better than nothing. I, B, I, A. Good, okay. Now the deductive reasoning part starts. What can we figure out about some of these unknown genotypes? And I'll remind you again, there's two ways that we can approach these. We can start with a parent and work down to their children and sometimes fill in a blank that way. We can also start with a child and work up to their parents. And another thing that's helpful is it's very nice to find someone who is homozygous, like, say, a type O person, because it's there's less guesswork involved with the alleles this way. If you have two of the exact same allele, then you don't have to worry about which one of these came from mom and which came from dad. You know it's one from each and that makes it easier to figure things out. So, starting here, for example, this person has two of the little i allele. One came from each of their parents, which means, oh, there's two blanks right there. Mom must have contributed one of these little i's, and Dad gave the other one. Now, unfortunately, all these nice type O people have the same parents, so this can't help us more there. But here's another type O person. They must have gotten one of these little eyes from each parent. One from their mom, of course. The other one must have come from dad, so this dad has a little eye at the very least. Uh, can we do that any place else? I kind of don't think so. Okay, so the blood type O's have helped us there. 
Are there any homozygous parents that we can work off of? Well, there's one here. If this person's little i, little i, then all of their kids have to get that from her. That's every egg she produces will have little i in it. That fits fine with this kid, and it tells us this kid, her son, must have a little i allele right there. All right, that's progress. Uh, what else? I'm, I'm looking for low-hanging fruit that we can pick off really easily, and I'm not seeing too much more, so... Now we probably have to fight a little harder. Let's, uh... Can we tell anything about this parent? This blank here is either IA or a little I. Does that help us with anybody? Here we have an IA, which could have come from either parent, so that's not helpful. Here we have an A, which could have come from here, and a B, which could have come from here. I don't think that narrows anything down. This is interesting. Where did this B come from? That would have come from Dad, which means this had to come from mom, right? We said earlier that this is either IA or it's a little I, and now we know the answer. It's got to be a little I. So that is enough for us to get grandma's genotype. One space down. Let's see if we can pull off that kind of trick again. Here we have IB. This is either another IB or it's little I. Does that help us anywhere? We don't know anything about this parent. That's kind of a hassle. Uh, here, actually, this is pretty good. Where did this A come from? Not from Dad. This has to be either a B or a little I, so that can't be right. This parent must have contributed the IA. IA came from her. Now, if we know that, then where did this little I come from? Had to come from Dad. Here we have an IA, that would have come from mom, IB would have come from dad. I'm not sure we can get this blank. We can't even tell if this person's blood type is AB or just plain old A. All we know for sure is that they have an A allele because they gave it to this kid and they gave it to this kid, but we don't know what their other one was. Uh, what else can we get here? This grandpa... Let's see. Here we have two little eyes, one from each parent. That's not helpful. But here, where did each of these come from? The little eye... Well, technically it could have come from either of them, but think of it this way. Mom could only have contributed little eye, so this would have had to come from Mom. She can't have given them the IA. She could only have given them this, which means this IA had to come from Grandpa. This is IA. Okay, so that's just reasoning by elimination. If all that she can give is an I, then this I must be from her, because it can't have been the IA. That's a few leaps in a row, but they're all solid, and that got us this branch of the family tree. I don't see any way that we're going to get this individual one for, which burns. I hate it when I can't finish one of these things, but I really do think we are stuck there, so let's try something else. This person's from outside the family. We don't know anything about their folks, so that's not easy to fill in. Can we tell anything about this? They have an IA, which unfortunately could have come from either one of their parents. Um... Yeah, this could be an IA, or it could be a little I. The parents had both of those to give, and we can't tell which one it is, so I think we're stuck on that person. And as a result, we are stuck on this person also. So, great big sad face all over this region. Can we get any of these? We got the rest of the middle generation, so that's actually pretty good. And down here, I think that one's hopeless. These are all type O, so we knew them right away. Can we do anything with this? 
this IA could have come from either parent, but okay, if it came from mom, then this could be an IA or a little i. That's not good. If this came from dad, then this would have to be IA, but there's no way to tell which. Yeah, I don't think we can get this one. There's The fact that the IA could have come from either parent means it's hard to lock anything down there. And I fear we're going to have... Oh, no, we can get this one. Where did this B come from? It did not come from Dad. He doesn't have those. The B must have been Mom's contribution. The B came from the egg. So Dad contributed one of these. Which one was it? Well, it can't have been the A. If it was, his blood type would have an A in it, and that's not the case. So Dad must have given him the little I allele. There we go. So, some maddening gaps that I don't think we can fill, but we got a fair bit of the pedigree. And the ones that they particularly asked us for are individuals 1-4, and one six, and they said, can we get their blood types? Well, this person's blood has the A antigen in it. That means it could be A or AB. Individual one, four is either A or AB, not sure. Individual one, six, their blood is certainly type A. And we've talked about the genotypes we couldn't get, and the reason why was basically that there was uncertainty about where alleles in the parents came from, or in the case on, on this side, we don't have any information about the parents, and we don't have enough information from kids to fill in all the blanks. That happens pretty regularly. Now, they give us one last question about this, where they say... Individual 3-3, three, three. so this woman, whose blood type is O, I'm just going to pop her out of the family tree so we have a little more space to work. That's her, she's still individual 3, her blood type is still O, we still know her genotype. Marries a man with blood type AB. which means her genotype is IAIB. And it says they have four children. Will any of these children have blood type O? Short answer, no, they won't. Why not? Well, a Punnett square can illustrate this pretty easily. Or rather, a Punnett rectangle. Here's what we're going to get. Mom can only contribute little i. It's the only allele she has. All of her eggs will contain little eyes. Sperm cells from dad will contain either IA or IB. And that means their kids will be... Half of them will have blood type A. And half of them will have blood type B. So, basically, it's hard to... You can't transmit blood type O to your kids without cooperation from the other parent. You only get to pass on one of your little I alleles, and this other parent doesn't have any little I's to give. He will pass on either his A antigen or his B antigen, but he can't do both because you only get to give one of your alleles to your children, to each of your children.